The Pentagon may choose to dump the Joint Enterprise Defense Infrastructure contract if a judge agrees to hear arguments from Amazon Web Services about political interference. It would mean two years down the drain for the department's most important cloud computing contract. Tony Scott is CEO of the Tony Scott Group. He's former federal chief information officer. Tony, welcome. Thanks for coming on the program. I, this, this informational memo that the department sent to Congress was something I hadn't seen many of before. What do you think that says about the level of consideration the department's giving to actually backing out of JEDI? Well, I think not only the memo, but the rumors on the street are that that's, you know, under strong consideration. And, you know, I think it makes sense at this point. You've got a, a contract or a requirement that's now almost four years old, and certainly a lot of things have changed since then. But I think it's also the practical realization that, you know, if you find yourself riding a dead horse, best to dismount and and start over. And, you know, I think the criticism of the contract in the first place are, you know, valid. Um, you know, even the DOD strategy says multi-cloud. Uh, and uh, certainly there's been a lot of developments in the cloud space in the last several years. So I think there's a bunch of great reasons to just drop it and start over. Let's pretend there never was a Jedi and the department is approaching this from the very beginning. What are the options that are available in the cloud space today, technologically, but also acquisition wise, so that this doesn't become another two to four year process? Well, certainly DOD has had a, a number of contracts that it's successfully um, uh, put out there and is actually fulfilling now. So one of the options is just to ride one of the existing um, uh, contracts. Um, but I don't think, you know, starting from scratch and, and starting over is such a bad idea. Certainly there's been a bunch of lessons learned and I think the whole procurement process could be done uh, much easier this time based on all the lessons that have been learned. What are the most important lessons that the department has learned and how to avoid them this time around, Tony? Well, I think, you know, the procurement process itself was considered to be uh, one that was had a lot of outside influences and and certainly, you know, any procurement the federal government does has the danger of having that, um, you know, be the the aura of it. And, and I think they've learned a lot about that. So uh, they could also set up an independent external panel um, you know, to help, uh, you know, vet not only the uh, and, and create the contract in the first place, but um, even vet, uh, you know, potential um, uh, app applicants and, and that kind of thing. Um, and then lastly, I think, you know, probably the most important thing is take advantage of all the developments that have happened in the last three or four years and develop a contract that, you um, you know, would really meet today's needs, not the needs of three or four years ago. So that leads me to the next, the extrapolation that strikes me, Tony, is if this is something the department was going to get into for 10 years, how do you write a contract that does exactly what you just said, but also addresses the needs of the department in 2026, you know, five years from now and 2031, 10 years from now? How does one write that kind of contract? Well, I think the best way to do it is to have competi competition. So if you have multiple vendors, you can take advantage of innovation that each of them might uh, develop. Um, it could be two or it could be three. I, I wouldn't say we need, you know, eight or 10. Um, but you really want to be able to take advantage of, uh, of R&D that happens in the marketplace, developments in technology, and it's not going to be even across all suppliers. Um, one year, one supplier is going to have better uh, advance uh, advancements. The next year could be someone else. Um, so you really want to be able to take advantage of that. But at the same time, you want an architecture that allows you to move easily from one to the other should the need arise. And I think those are all things that uh, should be built into the uh, next contract, whatever form it takes. Um, it, this gets at the crux, though, it seems to me, of what the department has struggled with for, and not just in technology, 
but in weapon systems and every other kind of acquisition, and that is buying a capability and not buying a thing. Um, is this maybe the most important contract that the department has done from that perspective, Tony, to say to industry, we need to be able to do this in whatever way you're able to get us to it instead of listing a long list of requirements and it has to have this and this and this and this? Yeah, I, I think you're on the right track there because as we know, this is a very fast moving space. I mean, there's things that have been invented this last year that we weren't even thinking about two or three years ago when, uh, when Jedi was uh, originally conceived. So you really do want to be able to take in the new developments that uh, come along. And I think, I think along the lines of what you suggested is exactly the right way. All too often in government contracts, we get too specific, uh, and then that ends up trapping us uh, later on. So to that end, is there something that exists now that the department could just, I mean, uh, maybe I'm sure I'm oversimplifying it, but just tag on to. DISA has uh, buying capability through MillCloud. There are any number of other vehicles. Isn't, is there something there or is this capability, is this requirement so complex that it needs to be its own special thing? Well, I think, you know, if, if I were in charge at this point, the first thing I would do is, look around and see what else I could take advantage of, and primarily for speed reasons. You know, this has really been long delayed, and, and I certainly subscribe to the notion that there's a great need on the part of DOD for some of these capabilities. So anything that delays it further is bad news from, from that perspective. So the first thing I would do is see what other capabilities I could leverage. But it doesn't mean that you know, I would abandon the notion of, of redoing it um, uh, and, and maybe, uh, you know, bringing in some of the other things that uh, have come along since then and, and wrapping it up in a, in, a, in a larger deal. Tony Scott, terrific insight as always. I appreciate your time. Great. Thanks so much.